Welcome to your new model change notification video. A video series where I talk about the differences and changes of successor aircraft of aircraft models I already featured in my How to Fly series. And today we take a look at the Yak 1B and we compare it against the Yak 1 Series 69. I put the videos of the 69 in the description and it should be on screen right now. It's kinda recommended to watch the other videos as well to get the full picture and to learn the general engine management of the Yak. I want to emphasize again that I focus in this video on the differences between both aircraft and I'm not going to explain again how to taxi in detail or how the cockpit instruments are working and stuff. For that you have to watch the Yak 1 video first. So that out of the way, like always, let's focus on the airframe changes first. Most obvious is the new cockpit, now featuring a bubble canopy and an armored glass headrest, offering one of the best all-around visibilities of the eastern front planes. Only the armored glass at the front is a small minus point in that regard. The armored glass makes aiming and acquiring targets in less than ideal lighting conditions a bit harder. But other than that, you can maintain a fantastic situational awareness in the Yak 1B. The tailwheel was unlockable via button press in the Series 69. The 1B's tailwheel works differently. It only gets unlocked when the rudder is deflected more than three quarters of the maximum deflection. So be conservative with the rudder input while taxiing and takeoff. If you want to taxi straight, only use minimal rudder and use mainly the brakes. The engine hasn't changed at all and therefore large portions of the engine management has not changed as well. However, the Yak 1B has now a new propeller pitch governor which works much, much quicker. That prevents over revs throttling up in dives and makes RPM adjustments much easier. Furthermore, the 1B has more effective radiators now. They need to be closed less and therefore you can maintain higher speeds at the same temperatures. The tailwheel is now retractable, which helps with the aerodynamics. The Yak 1B is basically a refined, more aerodynamic Yak 1 with a bubble canopy. One could think that won't cause a major performance difference, but you would be wrong. The Yak 1B is over all altitudes approximately 20 kph faster. The rest of the performance statistics are roughly the same, with only a minor improvement in climb rate and acceleration. The 1B, like its predecessor, is very, very maneuverable turns well, rolls well at the large variety of speeds, very stable even at low speeds and easy to control. However, the 1B likes to drop a wing in high angle of attack turns a bit more early compared to the predecessor, which can be a nasty surprise close to the ground. But overall the plane handles more or less the same with now better energy retention thanks to the improved aerodynamics. The armament has changed as well a little bit. The two Schkass MGs got swapped for a single 12.7mm UBS. That gives the 1B much more punch but less trigger time. The ammunition is expanded very fast, so you have to shoot very wisely and accurately. The aircraft retained the 20mm Shavak cannon and both guns 20 and 12.7mm can be shot separately. Which makes sense for example in ground attacks where you maybe want to save up the ammo of one caliber. The 20mm has a lower trigger time of both guns, which will cause that the cannon will be depleted first if you shoot both guns simultaneously. When the 20mm is expanded you have a few bursts left before the UBS is dry as well. Maybe you remember, the Yak-1 Series 69 was only a bit slower than the BF-09 F4 at combat power on the deck. The Yak-1B is now 15 kph faster on the deck than the F4. So the 1B is now able to catch a running BF-09 in a straight deck race. So simply gunning the throttle won't work on the 109 anymore. Ironically the speed advantage of the 1B gets greater the newer the 109 model is. That's because the Germans put more and more bling bling on Willy's toys. The speed advantage of the 1B over the 109 disappears at roughly 2 km of altitude and as you climb above 4 km the performance suffers at an increasing rate. From there on, the 1B loses the speed competition against all 109s more and more clearly. On engine regimes higher than just combat power, the 109s are generally faster at any altitude, but of course for a very limited time. All BF 109s outclimb the 1B, especially on higher engine regimes, and even more so when the 109 climbs in a shallow angle, where the 109 can combine speed and climb rate. 
Generally, one lands out accelerate the 1B quite clearly when emergency power is used. Maneuverability wise, the Yak can generally speaking roll and turn better at high and mid range speeds. However, the 19's freely adjustable horizontal stabilizer allows for better maneuverability if the pilot uses it properly. I know only a handful of pilots who use a stabilizer to the full extent. And as soon as you meet a Volgrind pilot who knows his stuff, a turn fight won't be easy anymore. Especially at super low speeds, the 109F4 wins if the 109 pilot is skilled enough. And again, the newer the 109 model is, the more likely is a Yak victory in that regard. But it's not the 109s I fear the most when I fly a Yak 1B. It's really the Focke-Wolves. At least the ones which are competently flown, which get more and more in numbers daily. First off, all Focke-Wolves are faster on most altitudes. On combat power, the A3 is about 10 kph faster on the deck, the A5 is 15 kph faster. Both Focke-Wolves completely outclass the 1B if they throttle up higher, and they can hold that throttle quite long, 3 minutes at minimum. The speed advantage of the Focke-Wolves disappears briefly at 2 km of altitude as they are running in their supercharger performance gap. Between 2 and 3 km of altitudes, the Focke-Wolves are actually slower than the 1B. However, it's kinda rare that the fight sticks to that particular altitude, especially if the Focke-Wolf pilot knows of that gap. Usually fights tend to go lower over time. Above 4 km, the speed advantage of the Focke-Wolves grows again and gets more and more clear. So in most situations you won't have fun with the 190s if you keep playing the speed game. However, many Focke-Wolf pilots make the mistake in climbing in a too steep angle away from you. And the luck is on low altitudes the better climbing aircraft. Especially when the 190 climbs into the supercharger performance gap. That gives the Yak a chance to catch up. Only when the climb bay angle is shallow, the Yak has usually no chance to catch the Focke-Wolf 190. The Yak 1B has, like its predecessor, no issue outmaneuvering the 190 in a sustained turning battle. As soon as you are on the 6th of the Focke Wolf, he will have to use serious skill and luck to get you off his 6. There are some caveats to this. First, be careful not to overshoot a 190 when the Focke Wolf pilot uses his very, very good roll rate combined with an excellent instantaneous turn rate. Overshooting a Focke Wolf is a serious threat and it's sometimes hard to avoid. In the defense, the instantaneous turn of the Focke-Wolf is very dangerous as well, since it's hard to get out of the gun envelope quickly, so don't rely solely on turning in the defense. Finally, the Focke-Wolf has very good high-speed turning and rolling capabilities, which are much better than the Yak's capabilities. So to fly the Yak 1B well in general, you basically stick to the same tactics you already uh, employed in the Yak 1. If you have more questions about the fighting, I recommend to watch the dogfight video on the Yak-1 Series 69. The difference in the Yak-1B is the fact that you are a little bit faster. This gives you more energy to work with and you will have an easier time to catch enemies, even when they are actively trying to get away from you. This is still not possible every time of course, but it's much much easier. The same goes for the defensive flying, but now for the first time there are circumstances where you can run away from a 109. Use this to your advantage, by extending away early in the fight. You are still in the worst aircraft compared to the Germans, but the advantage of the German aircraft are shrinking a little bit. But that's it for the Yak 1B. There's really not a whole lot to say about the aircraft, since it's really only, and in quotation marks, only a little faster Yak 1 Series 69 with better all around visibility, more or less. If you'd like to support my efforts on the channel, consider a pledge on Patreon or PayPal. The links are in the description. This helps to run the channel, and I thank all my current patrons for the continued support for such a long time. And most importantly, I hope to see you all in the next one.